The journey by road to Milford Sound is beautiful because of views like this. Its high peaks soar out of the ground into the clouds and create beautiful atmospheric moments. There have been many kilometres driven to reach this World Heritage Site. And as I start to explore this beautiful place, the impact from the many days travelled on this journey starts to set in. Considering the effort that I've put in over the last nine or ten days of waking up for a sunrise, then doing a sunset, and then we've been in summer time, so the days are long. I've had a bit of a burnout, I think. I do think that this is a very difficult location to photograph. There are just so many elements that have to come together for this to be, you know, the perfect image in my, through my eyes. Milford Sound is not an easy place to get to. And despite my moment of fatigue, I push on and still try to create some photographs because I know that I will not be visiting this location again for quite some time. However, will my fatigue hold me back? Will it stop me from creating some beautiful photos? Well, let's find out. And here we have the stunningly beautiful Milford Sound in all her glory. And I feel so lucky and privileged to be able to photograph this today and to show it to you. The weather conditions this morning are nearly perfect. We have almost mirror-like reflections on the, on the seawater here. We've got some low level cloud, we've got some high level cloud. And when I look around us, we've got clear skies above us and the sun is rising from behind us. So we're gonna get lots of nice direct light hopefully on these clouds and on those peaks. And as you can see, there is a little bit of light starting to build. So we've done everything we can do to be in position for the best conditions. And now we have to wait for the nice light. Fingers crossed, we're set up, we're ready to go. I've got the Fujifilm GFX 50S2 set up. We've got the 30 millimeter prime lens on. We've set it up for a panoramic photo. And uh, we've got a polarizer to take some of the glare off the water and an ND filter just to flatten out the water. ISO 100 F8 and the shutter speed will be what it will be. I've taken one photo already, I will put it up now for you to look at, I hope you enjoy it and I will leave the settings for you to look at as well. God, is that beautiful? I moved further away from where I was before, further back, because there's a bit of wind building down there. You probably can't see it from on the screen, but it's creating a little bit of ripple on the water and it's, it's killing the reflections. So by moving back, we're more sheltered by the surrounding mountains and uh, the water's really calm here. And we've brought this beautiful tree into the composition you can just see over there near Mitre Peak and there's some reeds in the foreground. Bit of a line running through. Oh, I think it looks beautiful. I still think our composition could be better. We may need to move further this way. There's some really nice colour starting to build in the sky now. So we will just continue to follow this shoreline and see if we can find something else. I think this is much better here. We've got better reflections here.
we're using the polarizer just to take the glare off the water and it's revealing the reflections much more nicely we're focusing on the mountain in the distance so infinity of focus and we're getting at f8 we're getting lots of depth of field up to 10 meters so the sunflies are absolutely attacking me now oh, f8 and it is a three second exposure 3.7 sorry two second timer And yeah, it looks really good. Lots of nice mood and atmosphere. So just then we did have a little bit of red, red glow. Oh, the sunflies are everywhere. A little bit of red glow. And uh, on that peak, on Mitre Peak, but there's some crowd moved in. Oh, God. I think the problem with sandflies is if you stand still, they just attack you. And oh, they're tiny, like little midges. But the, the bite is horrible. It's worse than a mosquito bite. It's so itchy. And it starts itching straight away. Oh, God. Right. I think we've done with this location. We're going to have a bit of a walk up this way. And... Uh, See what else we can find. So we did just move right and follow the shoreline a little bit and we found a bit of a viewing platform that gives us a great views of um, Mitre Peak and down the sound and but it's also brought in the marina into the photo which I don't really want I don't think it adds any value to the photo particularly for my type of photos anyway so I do think that where we were before is probably the best the best photo for this morning. There is a little bit of you can start to see Mitre Peak right now. So um, yeah, I think we might make our way back down this way and uh, just see if we can, just see if we get any nice light on these clouds. It could be quite nice. So I think we've found the best composition I think for this morning, which is here quite like it because it brings some of the reeds into the middle of the photo and there's the tree off in the distance there which when I'm lower down there I can actually get the reflection of and we get a good reflection of both of those peaks the only thing that's bugging me right now is the amount of cloud that's sitting around Mitre Peak is kind of blocking it a little bit so we just need to wait a little bit I think for that to blow across which I'm sure it will do It's starting to look nice, this scene. The cloud is starting to push across and the nice light is starting to build on those peaks. The only thing that's spoiling it, and I know I keep complaining about it, is the bloody sand flies, because they're a nightmare. Ah. Just taking a photo, I'll put it up. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's just a shame I can't share the sand fly experience with you as well, which you're probably quite pleased about. <sighs> So I think we've had the best from this location this morning and uh, I'm going to now retreat back to my tent where I can hide from the sunflies and uh, we will can stay here for one more day so I have a sunset and another sunrise to go through and we will do some exploring around this area today. So stick with me because we're going to go around and explore some of this Fjordland bush and see what we find. I'm sure it'll be fun and yeah hope you enjoy the video. Whew. So after this morning's photography shoot, the weather changed quite dramatically. It went from being relatively clear skies and calm winds to being rather windy and very wet. And that can make photography quite difficult and it has done that for me today. I had full intentions of going out today and doing some woodland photography and maybe trying to capture some of these, these nice high peaks you can see behind me here. 
with the clouds around them, but that's just not been possible. And to be honest with you, considering the effort that I've put in over the last nine or 10 days of waking up for a sunrise, then doing a sunset, and we've been in summer time, so the days are long. I've had a bit of a burnout, I think, and today I actually welcomed the bad weather because really what I wanted to do was just sit down and watch TV and just eat some food and rest and have a shower. And that's exactly what I did and I've really enjoyed it. So I've come out now for the sunset shoot and uh, the weather has calmed down a little bit. I've been monitoring the weather and the, the weather apps have been relatively accurate today and the weather predictions are telling me that the sunset, the, way the wind will die down and the, the skies will clear and the rain will go away. So I've decided to come out and have a bit of a look around. We're just walking down a bit of a river track here and just trying to see what we can find. Maybe try and find some nice trees or, or find something a bit different and we'll make our way towards the sound. But yeah, I'm hopeful. We are putting some effort in to get ourselves into position. And uh, hopefully it'll turn out well. And if it doesn't, then at least we've had a nice walk. I do feel like these trees here are very spectacular. It's like an ancient forest, old growth trees. And they just, they just remind me, I don't know why they remind me of bonsai. I think it's because of the ornamental and organic growth of the branches and how they have the little shrubs that sit on top of them. They're absolutely beautiful. And I love the contrast on the bark, how on one side it's got dark green moss on the other side, it's white. It kind of looks like a bit like a birch tree actually. But uh, it's just, it's just beautiful. So I did just find myself quite a nice um, composition, I think, of Mitre Peak. And uh, it's got some vegetation, some fern type. Toy toys, I think they're called, um, in the foreground and the moving around in the wind. And then there's all this cloud and blue sky sort of Mitre Peak. And it's just raining here again, so I'm going to take another photo. I want to try and soften the image a little bit. I'll just show you my composition quickly on the screen. This is it here. It's at F11. Raindrops on my lens. So right here where we are, there's a, a beautiful glacial river that just runs down into the sound here. Sorry, the sand flies are having another go. And the water is just so clear. It's lovely, like a lovely green, turquoise green color. And I've just been playing around with the telephoto lens, the 45 to 100. I've got it at 100 millimeter F4. I'm just using the polarizer to take off the glare and it's producing this really abstract type photo. I don't really know what I make of it right now, but I'm quite enjoying messing around with it. Um, I'll just show you quickly on the back of my camera what it is. So here we have, there is the water down there. And here we have the photo, There's a few different ones. And as you can see, when I turn the polarizer, it just completely takes off that glare. And it just produces this really kind of, really painterly effect. It's looking really nice. So here we are back at the sound and behind me you can see Mitre Peak and we have just set up for a panoramic with a 30mm lens and we've got a polarizer and two ND filters on there so essentially we've got 11, 11 stops of ND and there's, there's not much colour around so I've got it set up in a black and white and I think it's looking pretty beautiful as a black and white shot. Um, they're not the ideal conditions that I want. I think this, like I said yesterday, in the previous video, I think this location definitely suits a sunrise because of the direction of the light at this time of the year. So 
I'll put a photo up. I hope you enjoy it. So I did just find a, a nice composition here, but I've got to be honest, it's quite a challenging one because we're photographing these toy toys in the foreground with Milford Sound uh, in the background, uh, but there's a little bit of wind, so I'm having to use ISO 1600 uh, F8. So it'll be interesting to see how this one turns out. I took a photo and uh, I hope you enjoy it. We will see what we can do with it in post-processing. I do think that this is a very difficult location to photograph. There are just so many elements that have to come together for this to be, you know, the perfect image in my, through my eyes, which looks like in this location where we've got high tide, no wind, uh, nice reflections of the two mountains. I don't mind if there's cloud or no cloud, but I would like to see the peaks and I just want a splash of color. Um, not too much to ask. It's a nice, you know, normal landscape photography photo. But um, I think it's because it's, it's coastal and it's tidal. It's very difficult to photograph. So this morning I've been going around photographing with the Fujifilm GFX 50S2 and the 30 millimeter prime lens, which is on here right now. And I've been hand holding the camera for the simple reason being is that I've been focusing on some of these toy toys around Sorry, the sand flies are biting me. You're having to bite your face and everything. So yeah, so I've been focusing on the toy toys and then moving around in the wind. So I had my ISO set to 800 and hand holding. I've been just, I've just forget, forget the, uh, the reflections on the water this morning because there's just too many, too many ripples on the water. And I think I've done enough long exposures yeah, over the last couple of days that I don't need to do anymore. So I wanted to try something different this morning. So I've been hand holding, focusing on the toy toys and uh, just been using those as a bit of a foreground interest item. And yeah, just create something a bit different. Wow, there's like five of them on me there. Wow, they just feast. They are ruthless little, little flies. So look, I think we're going to call the end of this video. This video has gone over two days now. And look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up what I think have been the best photos of the last two days for you to look at at the end of this video. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, Milford Sound, it's an amazing place, but very difficult to photograph. But yeah, I'm very, very happy and very lucky to have been here again. Yeah. So yeah, hope you enjoy the photos. Hope to see you next time. Like and subscribe. Sure, go to my website and check out my merchandise and my, my fine art prints. It'd be greatly appreciated. And yeah, see you next time. Bye for now.